you said they are dark horses in this tournament as well do you think they can lift the title uh i'll give it to 10 to 15% to be honest uh, a huge blow i think uh, which south africa experienced earlier in the year shabnam ismail has retired yeah. from south africa which i feel it's a huge huge blow uh, because i still feel that they have a, a little bit of a weaker middle order with you know new guys coming up we haven't seen them play at all never won the t20 world cup to be honest do you think they can be the underdogs and somehow surprise the other nations but you're saying that south africa will have tough times defeating bangladesh women it's time as we move on to the next women's team for the squad analysis for the t20 world cup 2024 which is going to be hosted at the uae i have deepu with, with me vidipu welcome to the show we're going to talk about the proteas every single time be it the men's be it the women's we speak about them being the underdogs but this time we're not going to talk about aiden markram and his side we're focusing on laura volvat and her side talk us through on paper what do you look into south africa and the squad for the upcoming t20 world cup uh first of all thank you for having me here pritham uh coming to south africa i think it's a great squad uh, led by laura volvat and obviously the experienced campaigners will be having a crucial role to play with marijan cup what she has done for dc uh, in these years of wpl and what absolutely is chloe tryon abhyanga khaka i mean all these experienced pros are there in that squad and uh, tasman brits is another youngster coming up what what she did in the recently concluded series against india and india uh, you know just show showcase that what package she's made of so yes some exciting talent it's just that how they click as a unit in uae that's uh, that's to be seen absolutely how they adapt to the conditions of the oe you mentioned about a few players in glimpses but i want to li- go into a little bit of detail as well dipo tasman brits and laura volva the pair at the top of the order how key will it be for south africa in order to post big totals on the board in t20 format in conditions at uae where you know the ball might keep low as the odd bounds and also scoring ahead early on in the innings might just be easier so exploiting the power plays what i mean how important are these two pair for you i think it, it's going to be very important to be honest uh, i think they'll be more happy that the world cup is now being shifted to uae rather than bangladesh because as compared to the uh, to the two countries you know the pitches in uae are still a little bit better as compared as compared to what we see in mirpur and in uh, chittagong so i feel it's better that you know uh, these guys will uh, will look forward to the challenge and obviously tasman brits is another a uh, block who's very aggressive to you know get off the mm. blocks as well and what you know takes a little bit of time to set set her tone so i think it's an ideal combination and not only in uh, uh, posting totals but also in defend uh, while chasing as well i think uh, both these batters will play a crucial role to you know help south africa qualify for the knockouts absolutely and that's and that's what i wanted to hear to be honest when it comes to not just in uh, posting totals on the board in the first innings but chasing down targets which we have lately known for the men's team a little bit of the c word comes into the picture but i i think the women's team do not have in that amongst themselves as well but talking through the next player the all rounder i think she is the one which has uh, is the prime player in the squad maris and cap we have seen her not only for south africa but we both of you have seen it very closely playing for the delhi capitals hugely yeah. experienced and brings a lot to the table isn't it dibu yeah i mean she's a she's a big package in the south african lineup and and she is a what she what the capabilities that she has she's a gun batter and can bowl at a quick pace along with abhyanga khaka uh, being in you know she 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 leads the bowling attack with her so that's a blessing for south, for the south africans to have a gun mid, gun all rounder in their middle order and uh, we have experience of uh, you know glimpsing that in the wpl uh, thankfully for our side so mm-hmm. hopefully we return her as well but still i feel it's a great great thing for south africa because what she does is she she adds that balance which this side needs yeah. uh, because i still feel that they have a, a little bit of a weaker middle order with you know new guys coming up we haven't seen them play at all mm-hmm. until is there's a women's south africa t20 coming up or any domestic coming up so i feel she has that balance and she can play the leadership role of the in the in that middle order and being a senior pro i think she has a lot of responsibility to help south africa win this cup 
absolutely that that she will have a lot of responsibility on our shoulders and that's what we expect from match winners just like south africa have won in place of maris and cap to be honest but you spoke about kaka leading the pace attack gadipu yeah. a huge blow i think uh, which south africa experienced earlier in the year shabnam ismail has retired yeah. from south africa which i feel it's a huge huge blow to their pace attack i think she could have easily played this t20 world cup because she has lot of Uh, energy and a lot of things left in her tank but still you have kaka you have maris and cap the responsibility lies on them now when it comes to the seeming duties yeah i mean i was quite surprised to you know why shabnam ismail was not there in that list squad list but now uh, i've heard it now that she is no no more playing for south africa i think i read about it but i just have skipped out so yeah it's a mm-hmm. really big blow but you know as they say the the show must go on so absolutely yes, these two have to you know Uh, handle the pace bowling duties and it's still okay you know with two experienced pros being there in that lineup so i think the job will be done uh, quite even. i mean it 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 will be not very much affecting south the south african side but still what we have witnessed from both the men sides and the women side as well that they when it comes to the crucial moments or whether it comes to the laws of Correct. the game you know in terms of net run rate and all the all that stuff even though uh that won't be there in UAE until and unless the weather gods surprising surprisingly so play a fair game so i feel it's it's okay uh you know they have to carry on but i feel they'll be good absolutely and we we have seen the conditions of UAE recently we had south africa versus afghanistan men's team taking place yeah. in the first odi and afghanistan created history in that game as well by defeating south africa for the first time but not talking about that victory more but talking about the conditions the ball was keeping below the ankle level i must tell you in the half way stage of the game so that's that's something which the players needs to be look into because i do not expect the women's situations the women's conditions to be a little bit different compared to the men's and that's where i think batting carefully having limited amount of experienced players in the tank for south africa i think these players need to show up and talk about experience and form as well players like sunay luz chile tryon who had a wonderful uh, cameo or wonderful phase you can say in the 100 in the women's 100 that was similar to a t20 format less than 20 balls less to be honest but similar to a t20 format do you think these players who were involved in the t20 in the 100 at england will have their a little bit of advantage form going into the ahead of a different very different conditions at uae but still a little bit of form that can they can take into along with them i think it's more of the confidence game to be honest because it's two different countries the pitches are different in, in england now you know they are making flat pitches so that you know it helps the batters as well whereas in uae the pitches will be a lot slower now what we saw earlier in the weekend you know with what uh, what we saw in sharjah to be honest it was really scary and they have i think it's been a trend now for i think two or three years i think back in 20 i'll Correct. go back in 2021 you know but i think it was a game between dc and kkr <laughs> don't go back there don't yeah. go back there when ravichandran ashwin was bowling the yeah. final over yeah we had the hopes there but yes those conditions the those pitches, flat pitches have been bowled yeah absolutely it's a similar kind of a pitch and in the same wicket we had the rahul tiwati show as well for the rajasthan yeah. royals as well i must tell you so things can be different but as the games progresses we say that due factor might come into the equation players will love batting at the surfaces win the toss bowling first is what is recommended at surfaces like sharjah but you may never know how the wickets play out to be but when i talk about south african women they have never won the t20 world cup 2024 or before as well never won the t20 world cup to be honest do you think they can be the underdogs and somehow surprise the other nations honestly speaking we have had di- different guests coming into the shows and they have said india australia england are firm favorites to win it can south africa be the fourth yeah i mean i think they are the dark horse of the tournament uh, given the fact that the group they have been played i think they are uh, played alongside england scotland and west indies if i am not wrong uh, maybe i think bangladesh is also there so Absolutely. i think in terms of that i uh, i feel that they have a really great chance of you know making it to the knockouts and they were the finalists of the previous edition as well which was mm-hmm. they were playing at home and i was surprised that they lost lost in their home conditions but but again that was a meg lanning led australia at that time so absolutely that, which is a, which is already you know an unbeatable side that tag i have given to them already uh, so 
I think so have you given the same to the men's as well? Uh, see, for men, you know, <laughs> we are at par with them. Uh, not discrediting the women's team as well, but I think that lineup of Australia is something different when it comes to women's True cricket. That. But still, coming to South Africa, yes, they have a great chance. Until and unless they click as a unit and, you know, uh, that blend of experience and youth comes in together, they, they can dismantle any side and any way, whether they bat first or bowl first, I feel. They have a great squad. Just need to just needs to click together and hopefully you know set up their targets of batting first as well as chasing. Clicking as a unit is what you are trying to rectify. To be honest, and that's what is important because you have a mixture of a side with youth and experience. How do you take that forward? A lot of responsibility on the short shoulders of Loda Volvar. And just like you said, Deepu as well, talking about how Group B lies for South Africa. Their their four opponents will be England, Scotland, West Indies, and Bangladesh should be an easy go through to the semi finals now uh, we have bangladesh there to uh, you know as a, a country which has faced a lot of you know difficulties and now they are they have to shift that tournament away from home i feel they'll be a little bit tough to tough to beat this time around with the conditions as well asian conditions around so they are better so, so yes, I'm sorry to interrupt, but you're saying that yeah. South Africa will have tough times defeating Bangladesh women? See, ideally, because the the Asian sides that we have, they are heavily reliant on the spinners. And what Correct. we have seen with the world sides, not only South Africa, but the other teams as well, even England, New Zealand, Australia. Okay, I'll keep Australia out of it, but still, they have... A little bit of England aside as well, because yeah. of the class they have in Capsi and Eccleston. They have good spinners, but you can they talk dra spinners, drag a little bit of New Zealand as well, yeah. yeah. The batting, I feel, you know, in UAE, even the pitch is what Sharjah is offering, and I think South Africa are playing at Sharjah. If not, better for them, because Dubai and Abu Dhabi will be great surfaces to bat on. Uh, they don't get slow that much, so... I feel it's just that how they will be, how they'll handle spinners in the middle overs. That mm -hmm. that's the key because be ideally key. what we see in batting first, I think 140 to 150 is an is a par score when it comes to women's cricket uh, and True. in ICC tournaments. You know, even 130 is sometimes not chaseable. So I feel they just need to bat uh, bat intelligently and you know just focus on the basics. True that. Anything can be possible and that's the reason why we say cricket is a very funny game. But the players to watch out for for South Africa, I've chosen my three players. Without a doubt, Captain Laura Volvert. Without a doubt, once again, match winner, Marizan Cap. And third one is, was a little bit tough, but I've gone with Nadine D. Clark. I think she's a wonderful all-rounder for South Africa. My three players to watch out for. Any changes for you, Deepu? Uh, two of them are same. Uh, I was actually, you know, Thinking of, I think we have missed one player, and you just took her name on the third spot. So, yeah, I'll go with uh, I'll go with Kaka. Uh, I have something with the South African Pacers, so yeah, that will be the only change. The rest you are same. Okay, because just because of the responsibility that lies on the shoulders of yeah. uh, Kaka is the reason why you're going with her. Fair enough, and that's what we expect from the players to watch out for to step for the sides. Predicted playing 11 time now when it comes to South Africa. And I've got with my predicted playing 11 for the Proteas. Laura Volvit and Tasman Bridge, without a doubt, are the openers for me. NAK Boss and Marizan Cap in number three and number four. Sunil Lewis, Charlie Tryon, Deckerson. You have Jafta, the wicketkeeper, at six, seven, eight as well. Then you go on to the bowlers as well. Sesni Naidu. you have Tumi. And then you go with Kaka. There you have the experience. A little bit of youth as well. Spinners is what they will target into the depot. A little bit of lacking towards there, I, I feel. Yeah, I mean, most of the names I haven't heard, uh, which they have included, <laughs> to be honest. Coming, uh, there's a lot that's of where the youth comes in. Uh, equation, yeah, which we haven't seen much, but still, I think it's a balanced squad. Well, balanced squad. Uh, the clerk has a job on her hands. I think uh, Tryon also offers bowling as well, absolutely. So, yeah, so oh. oh I think they are the two acres as well, two acres, so they have that responsibility just like the two experienced pace do pace pros have. Mm -hmm. So yeah, maybe yeah, it's a great squad, but you know it's just that how they click together and how they gel in the tournament. That's to be seen. Because if you look into closely, the top half of the playing eleven looks good on paper, yeah. while the bottom half of the playing eleven is where it's getting a little bit of rusty for South Africa. A little bit of inexperience can be exposed, and that's where you if you if you're Defending a low scoring turn, score of 120, 130. Are you backing this um, uh, this uh, bowling attack, to be honest? 
I think bowling attack. See, as long as they are getting wickets up front, they are in good state. Uh, what we have seen with Rabada and Nokia as well earlier for us or uh, for South Africa even so, uh, it's just that how they pick wickets up front in the power play that's to be seen. Uh, and in women's team, uh, women's game, I feel in T20s, whether if you get two or three up front, the the opposition mm-hmm. generally struggles as compared to the men's game. So, I feel it's important that. It's the early wickets that will set up the tournament for South Africa and also the fact that how well they will bat and chase especially. True that. Batting batting would be key for them. But as you know, the conditions as well, it's going to be between those three stadiums, Abu Dhabi, Dubai and Sharjah. If you're into yeah. the think tank of South Africa, if you're the skipper, Laura Walbert, what would you do if you're winning the toss on any of those surfaces? If you can go stadium by stadium, I'm fair enough with that as well. Uh, look, not only because of stadium, but I feel the history that they have. I think I'll bat first. Uh, given the fact South Africa and chasing, there is a something which is not directly proportional. So then, then would you back this uh, inexperienced uh, bowling attack to defend title, uh, defend as total? To be honest, yeah, because see, they have they have to learn from the situations as well, and they have uh, some experienced pros to you know to rub shoulders around with in this training camp and whenever they even they'll be playing in the warm ups as well so mm-hmm. a lot of things will get cleared uh, in that time so yes i i would rather back the bowlers to you know actually do the job the experienced ones because whenever there's an experience inexperienced batter the result can is mostly you know against your favor true that so i feel it's better that you know let's target up the bowlers and anyway in women's game it's ideal you know it's always better to bat first given how tough or easy conditions are and and whenever they go to sharjah to you know play their game they'll anyway bat first because what we see what we saw in the men's game as well you know uh, those were scary yeah, scenes absolutely. to be honest so, yeah, it's better <laughs> to be honest you, you you said about in the women's game you should always bat first no matter what the conditions are yeah. Was it a really off day for Team India in the a- Women's Asia Cup final versus Sri Lanka? Because we batted first, unfortunately couldn't defend. Um, I think those those are worldwide knocks, to be honest. But, uh, Chamari, Chamari Atta, 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 and I think uh, it was Prabodhani Silva, if I'm not wrong. Yeah, absolutely. So, so I think those were worldwide knocks and that was their day. It's, it was just a bad day and they were real, they were too good. All credits to the Sri Lankan batting team. True that. So, yeah, that those days can come. And I think it's better that those wake-up calls come for us as a as the Indian side because we have been in the knockouts for consecutive consecutive World Cups, even mm-hmm. if, if I include the Commonwealth Games as well, silver medalists. So, yeah, I feel it's important that, you know, we also pull our socks up for this important. True that, tournament. and that's that, that's the reason why we have Australia in our group as well. Final yeah. question to you, Deepu, before we end the show as well. You said England. You also agree with the same. England, Australia, and India favorites. You said South Africa are the fourth team. They can definitely become the fourth team moving on to the semi-finals. You said they are dark horses in this tournament as well. Do you think they can lift the title? Uh, I'll give it to ten to fifteen percent. To be honest. Uh, Given the fact that England and Australia are anyway, you know, poles apart uh, from South Africa. Uh, India, I feel, India have a great chance as well. But still, you know, I'll keep my, keep myself down, a little bit down to what I did in 2023 as well. <laughs> so, I, I feel, yes, we can have a great chance as well. But still, I feel, you know, first qualify for the semis and then, you know, go on from then. But yes, as comparing to other sides, I think South Africa too have a great chance. Is this the last time I'm hearing a yes, India have a chance from your end in, in the entire tournament of the World Cup? Because you're not going to say anything about India until unless they win the tournament. Yeah, I mean, obviously from heart there is support, but still I would rather, you know, keep my keep it to myself. Just, well, just the not similar recipe it. I did for 2024 as well, you know, earlier in the year. So, yeah, it's better that I keep it to myself until unless we it, uh, do it. And, and obviously what the 2023... Time uh, tagline was also there. It takes one day, so yeah, I'll just stick to that. That what we do on uh, on that particular day. So yeah, fair so, enough. Thank you so much, Deepu. That that that's all we have for you, ladies and gentlemen. When it comes to South African squad analysis, Deepu says fifteen percent chance is what he thinks South Africa has to lift the T Twenty World Cup twenty twenty four at UAE. Thank you so much, Deepu. Thank you to all the viewers for watching this video. We'll come up with more teams as well. Don't forget to subscribe to the Fifth Empire. Press the bell icon as well. Thank you so much and bye-bye.